everyone. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and thanks so much for coming back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Basically this video is about applying makeup to mature skin. I say over 60 skin but over 40 and 50. These tips may also apply to you as well. But before we get down to that, I did want to show you the outfit and jewelry that I'm wearing today. All of it is from Amazon, including the shoes, and I have complete details below the video if you're interested in anything that I'm wearing on my fingers, toes, or on my body. And if you're not yet a member of the 50 Plus Beauty family, I hope you subscribe. It is totally free. And when you click that little bell, that just sends you email notifications of my future videos. Most of them are about anti-aging. And if you're in favor of pro-aging, anti-aging, looking your best at any age, then I hope you'll also give this video a thumbs up. Okay, let's get into this. And I really think that this makeup I'm wearing and the tips that I'm sharing can help you look your absolute dewiest, freshest best. Okay, I'm starting actually with eyeshadow already just because I accidentally went ahead and applied it this morning before I realized what video I was going to do. But then I realized that I was planning to apply my eyeshadow off camera during this video. So I thought I would just leave it there and we'll get started as if I did not have eyeshadow on. Now, tip number one is to defuzz your face. Any place on your face that has excess hair, especially all over your face. And I normally shave my face in the morning and I'll link some videos below about my 30 plus years of face shaving. I really never have peach fuzz. But if you're reluctant to do this, this is the flawless tool. And here it is, it's got a wide head. You just turn it on and then you just gently run it all over your whole face, especially in this area. You just kind of defuzz everything about your face. It seems like under my lips and down here, I get a lot of witch hair as I call them and or peach fuzz. So do defuzz your face to get started. And don't just stop with the fuzz on your face. Basically, nose hairs can get long and unruly, and I use, again, another little flawless tool with a very small head here, and you just go on your nose and very easily get rid of those excess nose hairs, <laughs> and then you hit it with some alcohol, I suppose, but you can also use this tool right underneath your brows to make sure that everything looks good on your brows. Of course, it is recommended that you tweeze, but if you're not in the mood to tweeze that day or you don't have the right tool, you can go ahead and use this and that really does help and you don't have to pay twenty dollars plus a tip to go and have your brows waxed if you just have this little flawless tool which i think is wonderful now tip number two is to remove your fine lines or at least to reduce them significantly and i have been absolutely loving this instatox product my friend lola from tulsa actually sent me this product it was wonderful and it sat on my shelf for maybe a month because I thought, Lola, I've tried everything to remove fine lines and this stuff doesn't work, but this stuff is amazing. And just the other week, I tried it on my friend Terry and Terry has done nothing to her skin at all. She doesn't even wear makeup, but here is her before and after picture using the Instatox. And as you can see in the before picture, Terry has very hooded lids and amazingly enough, in the after picture, she has beautiful lid space. So if you actually have hooded lids, I think this alone could really help you with that problem, even if you don't use it anyplace else. And as you can see in her before picture, she has pretty significant under eye bags. And then in her after picture, she no longer really has those bags, or at least they're not as pronounced. I think her jowls look better in the after picture. And on her neck, you can really see the improvement because she has quite a few necklines and wrinkles in the before picture and her neck is significantly smoothed out in the after picture. And I will tell you that I have used other similar types of products, but this is the absolute best instant line remover I have ever used. It tends to last all day, but just like those other instant line removal products, those temporary products, you do need to just use a tiny pea size amount and you just apply it in the direction you want your face to go, which is up, and in the areas that most concern you. I basically just use it under my eyes, on my eyelids, in my marionette lines area, and in my chin area. I also use it on my neck, and I have already applied this this morning, but just be very gentle when you're applying your skincare and or your makeup after you've used this product, because that way you will keep the good effects of the line removal, and again, I have tested this product on numerous occasions. I basically wear it every day 
and I believe the line removal works at least into the evening, if not beyond. Now, tip number three is to give yourself beautiful brows. And to do that, I either use an old toothbrush, I start with that, to brush the brows in place, or this little Revlon brow coloring product, the Brow Definer, has a little spoolie on the end, and so I can just use that just to brush those brows up into place. And unfortunately, when you do that, you do see the grays even more. And I noticed in a video not too long ago that I had been neglecting really paying attention to doing this. It's important to have a magnifying mirror, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give my brows a little bit of help in the center there. And then every time I see a gray, I'm just going to go over that a little more carefully with this brow makeup just to cover those grays. And then I'll do it on the other side as well. And again, we're a little sparse on the inside, so kind of bring that in a little bit. And then wherever you see a gray, make sure that you're covering that up with the brow definer. Give yourself a little tail there. Now, after you've covered the grays up as much as possible, it's important to put those brows in place. And I love this NYX Brow Gel. I think it is called, what's it called? It's called NYX Control Freak. And you just brush your brows up, get them in place, give yourself a little bit of an arch there. Do the same on the other side. And I just go ahead and go in like this because the, the water from the product does make your brows look a little weird. But this is like hairspray for your brows and it helps to give you an arch that lasts. Now, tip number four is to emphasize your eyes. And as I mentioned, I already applied my eyeshadow. And one of the things that I absolutely love, and I always do this before starting the application of my eyeshadow, is that I go in with this CoverGirl Lid Lockup as my primer. Here it is. It's got a wonderful little doe foot head on it. And it does give you kind of a light tan color to your eyelids, which helps get rid of the discoloration we always get when we're 50 or 60 plus. And I did do a video not too long ago on my channel, which I'll link below, about a primer wars between this CoverGirl lid lockup at $8.50 versus the lid primer I used to use, which was the Urban Decay Primer Potion. And this worked actually better than the Urban Decay, and it is a third the price, so I really recommend that. And, and in terms of emphasizing your eyes with eyeshadow, you really don't want to emphasize your eye wrinkles with eyeshadow. And I used to love this Natasha Denona palette for my eyes, and I've purchased this like three times. As you can see, this is the third go-round, but it is really highly shimmery, and I love the neutral colors, but the shimmer was really just too much because I was applying this and it was looking like I had shiny alligator eyes. So I have switched to this wonderful palette, which is the Morphe Truth or Bear palette. It is very inexpensive and I love all the very neutral colors. And I particularly like this palette for us older, more mature beauties because it has really toned down on the shimmer. Basically what I do is I apply this color, this little matte cream color all across my lids from the lids up to the eyebrow. And then I apply this color, which has just a little bit of a shimmer in it, from the middle of my eyelid over to the front. And in terms of the crease color, you can kind of tell by how far down this is worn in the pad, but that little brown color is the color that is in my crease. It is a matte color, very, very nice color. And the second way you can emphasize your eyes, you can really make them pop, is to use a little additional color in the waterline. And I'm absolutely loving this for the top waterline. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Smoldering Eyeliner in the color black. And I just go ahead and do the waterline, which is just that little piece of skin along the top. And I'll go ahead and apply this. It's a little hard with contacts on. Once in a while, I'll get rid of a contact. It'll pop out of my eye when I do this. So you have to be very careful. And what applying the dark in the upper waterline has done is that it is making my eyelashes look a little bit thicker. There is the side with the waterline. Here is the side without. And I don't know if you can see this, but in the side without, you can see a lot of tan white skin underneath my lashes. I'm going to go ahead and use this waterliner in the other side. Here we go. Again, trying to ignore my contacts. I just kind of try to look away from where my contact is situated. As you can tell, that little bit of black in the lash line has really helped my lashes look a bit more thick. 
And in the lower water line, I don't generally use that dark color, although if I'm going out at night, sometimes I will do that. But what I have been using to open up my eyes in that bottom water line is this L'Oreal Brow Stylist. And basically it's got two little ends here. And I'll go ahead and use this end, the darker end, in that lower water line. And the whole idea here is to make my eyes pop a little more and to basically bring the look of the whites of my eyes down to where my eyes look a bit bigger. Let's go ahead and try this. And I'm just going to color in that lower, that lower water line. And that is how that looks on that side. And I'll do the other side. And that is how that looks with the dark in the waterline on the top and the lighter color in the waterline on the bottom. And please let me know in the comment section if you think this is a good look. I haven't been doing this for very long. Usually all I do is waterline the top with the dark. But let me know if you think this does open my eyes up a bit. Or let me know if you use something like this in your waterline and if you like the results. Now it's time for eyeliner, and I used to use black eyeliner, but that is very harsh for me, especially as a blonde. But as you pass 50 and onward, usually a softer brown black or even a gray or perhaps even a navy looks better on you than a black eyeliner. Let me know in the comment section if you're older and you're still using black, and if you like it, I'm very curious about that. Okay, I am using the Pure On Point Eyeliner in the color Down to Earth, which is a brown. And I particularly like this one because it's called On Point because it is a self-sharpening pencil, which I think is always nice to have an instant sharp tip, which is just great. And another thing I've really been doing lately that I've really been appreciating is that I'm giving myself a bit of a wing. And I actually had a viewer in the comment section say, Beth, you need a wing because that will lift your eyes. And she's absolutely right. And so basically what I do is I pull the skin here and I just go ahead and do a little wing there. There's a little wing there. And then I do the other side. Little wing there. And then I go ahead and extend the liner across my eyes. Okay, I went ahead and applied this liner off camera. And I will say, I'm not totally jazzed about this anymore for some reason. I've used this for probably two years and really loved it. If you have a great eyeliner that you use and enjoy, if you could share that in the comment section, I would love to maybe get a different one. But anyway, this is how the eyeliner looks at this point. Now, the next step in emphasizing your eyes is to give yourself an eye lift. And basically, I do that with two little tools. And if you're not curling your lashes, you really need to. And this is an iconic curler that really works well. I get it at Sephora. It is a Shiseido eyelash curler. It's beautiful. It works great. And I also use this little eyelash comb to kind of groom the lashes before and after curling. Sometimes after. It depends on how it looks when I apply the mascara. But a tip on curling your lashes is to go in and then lift your elbow because when you lift your elbow, it is actually curling those lashes further up, which is what you want. There's one side that's curled. Let's do the other side. And again, lift up the, the elbow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now I have curled lashes and it's time for mascara. And as older women, we really need to realize that our lashes can be a little bit skimpier and that it's important to apply a lash primer and I've been using and loving this Morphe Lash Primer, and it looks like it's blue, like, I was gonna say navy, it doesn't even look navy, it looks like neon blue, but it really goes on rather dark. It doesn't really look blue that much on your eyelashes, but I feel that it really does increase the width and volume of my eyelashes. And I've been using a fantastic mascara that I kind of stumbled on after I had my eyelash extensions removed, for those of you who follow my channel, you know I had about a three month period where I wore lash extensions and they never did look good. They looked absolutely terrible. That's a good anti-aging tip for you. Don't apply lash extensions and think it's gonna make you look better because to me, it really, it really didn't. Let me know in the comment section if you use lash extensions and if you feel they do work out for you and also what level because maybe I just didn't go natural enough. But the mascara I've been loving is the Stila Magnum Mascara. And look at that wonderful head on it. It has a little waist look on it. Okay, that is how that mascara looks. 
And another advantage to the wing, in addition to lifting your eyes, is that as you can kind of see there, it almost looks like you've got a thicker set of lashes out to the side. So the wing not only makes your eyes look lifted, it also makes your mascara look a little bit more voluminous, if that is the correct word. Now tip number five is to use a lighter touch with your foundation. And you can get that either with a BB or a CC cream, which is basically a more watered down version of your foundation. Or I have also been loving the Bare Minerals Powder Foundation. And I know that doesn't sound intuitive because you would think that powder would settle into your fine lines and wrinkles. But one thing I'm really finding out with this is that I can go extremely thin on this powder foundation and it achieves the same effect of lightening my foundation, which is very important as we get older. And I'm using it in the shade medium 12, medium beige 12, and you just put a little bit of this into the lid there. There it is, just a little bit there. And then I'm going to use this BK Beauty foundation brush, the 106, and tap it off. Then you're just going to start applying it in little circular motions all over your face, your nose, everything. But see what a wonderfully light touch that gives me. It really doesn't look heavy at all. And sometimes a cream foundation can look a little bit cakey, even in a BB or CC cream. Okay, there is that Bare Minerals. And as you can see, it really looks very light and very natural. It lets my real skin show through, but it has covered up a lot of my redness and discoloration. And along with your foundation, it's important to apply concealers and color correctors, especially as we age. This is one of my favorite products ever. This is the L'Oreal True Match Color Correcting Crayon. And I think this one is in light to medium. I'll link it below. But see the blackness that I have on my inner eyes. I've got some black there for sure. I just go ahead and put a little peach color corrector right in that area on both sides, obviously. And I just use my fingers to kind of pat it in. And as you can see, that peach has really color corrected the black and brought it back to kind of a normal skin tone. And that has done some nice color correcting. But to finish my under eye color correction, I have used and loved this for maybe two or three years. This is the Pixie by Petra Peach Corrector, and there it is. And basically what I do is I just take my little Angie BK Beauty brush. It's from Angie of Hot and Flashy, and they call it a kitten foot because it's a little tiny, little tiny brush there. And I just use it to apply that peach corrector in my discolored areas. I've got a big vein right there, and that totally covered that up. I love this stuff, and it's like maybe $12. It is totally reasonable in price. And I have discoloration over on this side, primarily from that bag right there. I have a little scar on that side of my face too, which never totally disappears, but it does really lighten that area up. And it basically brings any dark under eye bags to the forefront and makes them look a lot less baggy, shall we say. Now it's important to go in with their concealer. And this is the absolute best one I've ever found for aging skin. This is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Concealer. And I have this one in the color 250, which is some sort of a neutral beige. I can't really see it well enough. And I go just a little dab here, a little dab here, little dab on the sides of the nose. You see how I've got like a little discoloration, a little black there. And then right under here, I've always had a little funky shadow there. Concealer there, which helps. Now I'm going to get the sides of my nose. And another good tip is just to use your fingers because the warmth of your finger can really blend in things sometimes better even than this great little kitten foot. Now, I have not been using a loose setting powder because I absolutely love this so much. And if you followed my channel, you know I've used this for a long, long time. But this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrushed Flawless Finish Powder. I have a powder puff in there. And basically what I do, and I think it does, really just airbrush your face. You just put it where you have any little shine or where you want to blend some things in and it still allows me to have kind of a radiant look to, to my face but it definitely does calm down the fine lines and wrinkles just like the name implies I truly think this powder is worth it even though it's like $45 this lasts me for about six months though so I think it's good but it does airbrush the imperfections that you have remaining on your face 
It does null out the shine somewhat, but it leaves you with a nice natural kind of dewy finish. Now the next step in this mature makeup is to give yourself a facelift with your blush and contour. And I have been experimenting using cream blushes and they are said to look better on aging skin. And so I'm going to try this one from Ulta today. This is the Ultra Lip and Cheek color in the color Punchy. And do apply it to the absolute tops of your cheekbones. We'll go ahead and just do that and that. Don't apply it on the apples of your cheeks because our face falls. And so our apples will end up down here. We don't want that. And I'm going to go in to buff it out with this Angie of Hot and Flashy blush brush. And I've applied that blush, which is very pretty, but this tip was how to give yourself a facelift and my face still looks flat and rather hangy. And you do that with contour. Let me find my contour here. And I absolutely love this contour and highlighter. It's from Charlotte Tilbury and it's called the Nude Gasm Face Palette. Very, very beautiful. And I've probably had this one for well over a year. And as you can see, I've hit pan there. But let's go ahead and apply some contour. And I'll take a mixture of the darker and the lighter color, tap it off. Then you're going to suck in your cheeks and sculpt the side of your face like that. We're giving ourselves a facelift here. And my cheeks tend to be wide out to the side, so I'm bringing that contour in to narrow my cheeks. Then I'm going to use the same brush, what's left on it, to do the sides of my nose, and then the front tip of my nose. Then I'm going to grab a little more, and we're going to sculpt some jowls here. We're gonna sculpt our jowls in. And to finish off the gels, always come in and apply a little contour underneath your neck. Now, don't leave it like that because that is unblended. You don't want unblended. Put a little more there. And so what I do is I go in with this fabulous brush, and this is not BK Beauty. This is Real Techniques, and it is called their Sculpting Brush. And so basically what I do is I go in and I really, really try to blend in that contour everywhere I've applied it. Let's go ahead and repair this by putting a little bit of foundation on top of it because I, I did get a little too much of the contour there. But that has really helped to soften that contour a little bit more. You can do the same with a cream blush if you want, but I'll go back in again with this. Yes, much better. And finish off the job there. So that is the contour, and as you can tell, my face looks like it has more angles now. It looks like my cheekbones are a little higher, and it looks like my jowls are a bit more sculpted. Now I'm going to go in and finish off the job. We've added the low lights, but we do need to add the highlights. And so I'll go back in to this, and I'll just dip into a little bit of that luminizer. And then you just highlight the top of your nose about halfway down. I watched Wayne Goss do this years ago. And for some reason, you don't go clear to the tip of your nose. And then a little bit under the eyes there. If you've got really bad crow's feet, I probably would not do this step. Now, tip number seven is to create luscious lips. And number one here is always to use a lip liner. And I happen to be using the Pink Lady, that's the color, from BK Beauty, because I am putting on a pink toned lipstick. But there is that little head there. And I love her lip liners. They go on very, very creamy, and they stay on a good long time, which is wonderful. Go ahead and do the bottom. There is that lip liner, and if you don't like the look of heavily lined lips, then you can always do this as your second step after the lipstick, but do remember to line your lips because our lips lose color as we get older and they just look washed out, and basically you do want a defined lip line, just like a younger person has. Now I'm going to go in with this Maybelline Vinyl Ink in the color Koi, which I love this. And this is rather a cool color, but I'm going to tone that down with my lip gloss. And this is actually a long wearing lip stick, so you really do need to go ahead and give it a few minutes to dry down a little bit on the Cupid's bow there. Okay, that lip liner has had maybe 30 seconds to dry down, and I'm going to go back in on top of it with a lip plumper that I love from City Beauty, 
And this has that little bit of a peach tone. It's called San Diego. It's absolutely my favorite City Lips lip color or gloss color, I guess. But what it's going to do is it's going to null down the heavy pink of that lipstick and yet it will still retain its all day wear feature, which is great about those Maybelline vinyl ink lip colors. So as you can see there, it has nulled down the fuchsia pink color of that lipstick and given it more of a rosy pink, which I really love. Well, thank you for watching my tips for a great makeup application over 60. And if you also have products that you love, makeup products or skincare products you love that help you look younger, dewier, and fresher at our age, then I hope you'll share the information in the comments section below the video because that way we can all help each other and it will help me find great new products I can perhaps share with you. And I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And I've been reading lately from these Mind of a Champion cards. I really like these cards because they give you daily affirmations and also concrete steps to actually make the affirmation stick. Okay, ooh, I like this one. Here it is. I will not let failures stop me from my goals. I will not let failures stop me from my goals. Oh, I love this one and it totally applies to me. And it says, step up to the plate. I love this. Swing for the fences. You'll strike out a lot, but you're also going to hit some home runs. Try something new today with all your heart. Repeat this until it becomes second nature. And friends, I absolutely love this. I will not let failures stop me from my goals. And you know, I made the decision when I turned 65 to turn over a new leaf in this area because I'd really gotten stuck in my ways and I thought I have certain ways of doing things and I'm just going to keep doing them that way. But one thing when we get older is to try to stay fluid, to try to stay open to the lessons life wants to teach us and that includes different ways of thinking, different types of people, that sort of thing. But in our second half especially, it's important to step up to the plate each day and to swing for the fences and not worry about what happens so much, not worry about the outcome, just be happy that you are on the plate and you gave it your best shot. So friends, just for today, as we go through our days, Let's try to stop playing as safe as we have in the past. Let's start taking some chances, giving it our best, and seeing where life takes us. Take care, and I'll see you in my next video.